Hello students, welcome to grade 9 science class. I am teacher Marisol, your science teacher for this school year. I am going to discuss to you how to transport nutrients in circulatory system. Listen very carefully and get down important details in this lesson. Let's get started. Our topic for today is all about circulatory system. Circulatory system is also known as the cardiovascular system. This system is the life support structure that nourishes your cells. It functions with other body system to deliver different materials in the body. Which means circulatory system serves as the highway that transports substances into and out of the cells. Now, let us proceed to the major parts of the circulatory system. The first part of course, our heart. Heart pumps the blood throughout the body. And this is the main organ in the circulatory system. Our heart has four chambers, the two atria and the two ventricles. The two atria, which are the right atrium and the left atrium, are the receiving chambers of the heart. They accept blood from the body and from the lungs. While the two ventricles, which is the left ventricle and the right ventricle, are the pumping chambers of the heart. They move the blood from the heart to the lungs and into the body. There is a valve between each atrium and ventricle to prevent the blood from flowing backwards. The valves are like one-way doors that keep the blood from moving in only one direction. The next major part of the circulatory system is the blood vessels. Blood vessel carries the blood throughout the body. There are three types of blood vessels. The veins, the arteries, and the capillaries. The veins are responsible in carrying blood towards the heart, while the arteries are responsible to carry blood away from the heart. The third type of blood vessel, which is the capillaries. These are the smallest blood vessels in the body, connecting the smallest arteries to the smallest veins. This is the actual sites where gases and nutrients are exchanged. The last major part of the circulatory system is the blood or red blood cells. Blood carries the materials throughout the body. So, those are the major parts of the circulatory system the heart, the blood vessels and the blood. Now, let us proceed to the two types of circulation. The first type of circulation is the pulmonary circulation. It is a type of blood circulation wherein the blood flow is from the heart to the lungs and going back again to the heart. How? Let us trace how blood circulates in pulmonary circulation. First, the deoxygenated blood collected from the rest of the body enters the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava. Do you know what is the difference between the two? Their main difference is the superior vena cava carries blood from the head, neck, arm, and chest while the inferior vena cava carries blood from the legs, feet, and organs in the abdomen and pelvis. 
Going back to the pulmonary circulation, from the two vena cava, the deoxygenated blood will enter in the right atrium. From the right atrium, this blood will move to the right ventricle, passing by the tricuspid valve. After that, the blood has been pumped into the lungs through the right ventricle. It then passes by the pulmonary valve and will exit the pulmonary artery going to the lungs to get oxygen. And it will now become oxygenated blood. The next type of circulation is systemic circulation. When we say systemic circulation, it is a type of circulation wherein the blood flow is from the heart to all body parts. Let us trace how blood circulates in systemic circulation. After the pulmonary circulation, the blood has been oxygenated. The oxygenated blood will enter to the pulmonary veins and into the left atrium. When the blood reaches the left atrium, the oxygenated blood is being pumped from the left atrium to the left ventricle, passing the bicuspid valve, and then going to aorta. Take note, aorta is the largest artery of the body. And then, the blood passes through the aortic valve before it sends to all parts of the body through the branching smaller arteries to deliver oxygen. In systemic circulation, there are three branches involved. First, the coronary circulation, which is the branch that carries blood to the heart. Second is the renal circulation, which is the branch that carries blood to and from the kidneys. And lastly, the hepatic portal circulation, which is the branch that carries blood to the digestive tube and liver. So, those are the two types of blood circulation, the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. That is how our heart works. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next lesson.